Hello and good day. Today is May 6th, and uh, it is, if you're living in Northern Virginia, it's kind of a gloomy, rainy day today. So I hope you're doing okay. And it looks like it's stopping raining here in the afternoon, and maybe we can all get outside a little bit. Uh, this is the two Martins, and uh, we come to you every once in a while uh, to do highlights from the commemorations and the festivals and commemorations. And that's part of our liturgical calendar. Uh, that are days that are set aside to remember key events or people throughout history. And so that's why we come to you once in a while, because there's not a commemoration or a festival every day. And we use this book called More Days for Praise by uh, Gail Ramshaw, who lives in Arlington or Alexandria, one of those two, but lives in our synod here. And uh, is one of the ELCA's respected theologians, and so we're glad to, to use her material. We also are coming to you somewhat belatedly because May the 4th was the day for Monica, mother of Augustine. And somehow between the two of us, we forgot. And uh, maybe we got mixed up. You know, he's he's working on a the old calendar and we're on the the new calendar. So maybe that's maybe that was the difference in the days. Anyway, so anyway, both Martins forgot. But uh, Monica is an important person. Monica, the mother of Augustine. And uh, last time we were here, we talked about Athanasius as being one of the great fathers of the early church. And Augustine is the, another one of those that is very, very important. Um, Augustine has a theological lineage that goes down to Luther. Luther, uh, his, his, uh, his monastery order, he was an Augustinian. Uh, but also it's his theology that's very... Um, very dependent on Augustine's teaching. So this is a very important part of our, our Christian history. And Augustine becomes, again, one of those great theologians of the early and the early um, legal church. So once the church becomes part of the empire and starts to take itself and becomes more public and starts to build churches and those kind of things, uh, this is where Augustine becomes so important. Now, but Monica is his mother, and we wouldn't have Augustine, obviously, without his mother, but for two different reasons. Uh, she was born in 331 in Tagesti, Algeria, and she was married and bore three children, one of whom was Augustine. And in 387, she was present at Augustine's baptism in Milan, Italy. We'll get to that in a minute. And in 387, the same year, she died in Ostia, Italy. Now, Monica is remembered for her perseverance and her prayers towards the conversion first of her intemperate husband and then of her son, Augustine. In his confessions, Augustine lauds her as mothering, her mother in care and her faithfulness as a Christian. And I think that's why Monica is so important for us today, uh, because at least in my ministry, I've known many, many uh, mothers and fathers who say long and, and uh, ardent prayers for their children or other family members that are uh, what they would consider wayward. They want to bring them to the peace of God. And Monica is that person for all of us. She prayed and she was loving and she kept uh, bore witness to first her husband who uh, w uh, was not a Christian at first. And uh, then he came to know Jesus, and then it was her son that she began to work on. And, and Augustine was kind of a wild man in his early days and liked to party, liked to drink, um, liked to run around, and uh, his conversion is quite sudden. And he, uh, he points to Monica's prayers and her persistence, but also not her, um, it was her gentle persistence and but uh, on pers uh, that really wore him out. Uh, and won him over. Uh, so I think we can, lots of us can relate to Monica in a variety of ways when we have people that we're concerned for and uh, it looks like they're, nothing's really happening in their life. So there's always hope and Monica is that uh, saint for us for hope. Here are some words from Monica. Bury my body wherever you will. Let no care of it cause you any concern. The only thing I ask of you, that you remember me at the altar of the Lord, wherever you may be. 
These were written as Monica's last words, according to Augustine. Those are beautiful and powerful, and a reminder that as we uh, gather, we gather with the saints and the great crowd of cloud of witnesses, and uh, are buoyed by their spirit and their faith in our lives. Uh, today we praise God for all mothers, and I would say fathers, uh, especially for those who have modeled the Christian life for their children. And I think most of us have some family member that was very influential for us in our faith, whether we weren't a Christian at first and then became one, or we grew up in the faith. A lot of us take models from our fathers or mothers, uh, an aunt or somebody, a brother or sister. And Monica, again, is an example of that. Uh, we praise for God for all mothers, especially the, oh, we already said that, sorry. Um, we also pray for the church in Algeria from where she was born. And we pray for everyone who gives mothering care, including grandmothers, siblings, babysitters, and caregivers in child care centers, hospitals, residential homes, and refugee camps. Let us pray this, pray, this prayer for all families. Triune God, whose will it is that humans live in community, bless family life everywhere and fill all homes with respect, joy, laughter, and prayer. Strengthen the commitment of, our hus of husbands and wives to one another, that they may mirror your covenant faithfulness. Pour out your Holy Spirit on parents, that through them their children may taste your unconditional love. Empower all family members to live in your grace and your forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I hope this has been helpful. A little bit more about Monica, the father of Augustine, or the mother of Augustine, sorry, and uh, the power of persistent prayer and love. Tomorrow, no, May 8th, we'll be back with Julian or Norwich, renewer of the church. So until then, God's peace and prayers with you. Amen.